Okay, here we are in Lebanon, and what you're looking at is called Mount Hermon, and it's very important in the Bible because it said in the Old Testament that this is where the fallen angels descended to the earth. But that's not the subject of this presentation. The presentation is actually about a megalithic site called Baalbek in Lebanon, in the Baca Valley. So about three and a half hours drive from Beirut, we find the quarry, which is limestone of Baalbek. And you can see automatically that very large stones have been removed from this limestone quarry. And you can even see the fact that uh, the quarry is very ancient because of the weathering patterns on the stone. A bit more of a close-up. And uh, once again, you see the vertical and horizontal surfaces. Some very large stones were removed and some smaller ones. And according to conventional archaeology and the local guides, this quarry was solely used in the first place by the Romans when they occupied the area. However, what standard archaeology cannot explain is this. This is called the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, and it weighs 1,200 tons. And as we look a little bit closer, you can see that the Stone of the Pregnant Woman is still attached to the bedrock. So something happened at Baalbek in the ancient past, causing work to stop. And that's something that we find here, and we find at other ancient locations, such as in Egypt, Peru, Bolivia, etc. Now here again, you see the sense of scale. That is me and Yusuf Awiyan at the far end of the Stone of the Pregnant Woman. And also notice all of the ancient weathering patterns that you see on the surface. This gives you a side view of it, and again, with the number of people that are located on top of it, the quarry is privately owned, and that allows us to examine the Stone of the Pregnant Woman and other aspects of the quarry in quite fine detail. And the actual site of Baalbek, the temples, etc., are located about one mile or 1.6 kilometers in the background. So here again, this is just to show you the sense of scale of this massive stone and the quarry that it's located in. And here, this gives true evidence of the fact that the stone of the pregnant woman was never moved from its location. It was still being worked on when there was some kind of reason for stoppage of activity. And my theory is that it was an ancient cataclysm approximately 12,000 years ago. So that's 10,000 years before the presence of the Romans in the area. And once again, that's what we see in many locations. Conventional archaeology tells us that it was one culture that did all of the work, but what we see is that the ancient megalithic sites were found by the famous cultures such as the Romans, and they simply utilized the stone that was there and did their own constructions. So this shows you once again that the stone is still attached to the bedrock. And with the people that you see in the picture, this gives you once again a sense of the incredible scale. And here once uh, as well, you see the furrowing marks at the bottom and there is the presence of a crack in the lower surface just above their heads. That crack may have been part of the process of the cutting of the stone, or it may have been a natural flaw that was found, and maybe that's why the stone of the pregnant woman was never completed. And here again, just a general sense of scale. And once again, the great thing about the quarry is that you're allowed complete access to the entire area. And so that allows us to look at the features of such things as the stone of the pregnant woman in very fine detail. Notice also how on the left-hand side, the soil has been removed 
and on the right-hand side, it is still present. So it could very well be that the buildup of soil was proof, or is proof to us today, of the great antiquity of this stone. Again, we theorize that this work in this specific photograph was not done by the Romans, but it was something discovered by the Romans. And here, once again, on the right-hand side, you can see that the stone is partially buried in the soil. Now, what we can see here is you see a very large stone in the center, and then you see much smaller work on the left and right-hand sides. The work on the left and the right is the work of the ancient Romans about 2,000 years ago, but the stone in the center is the original megalithic. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the difference between night and day. Quite crude Roman work on the left and right, and the giant scale work of the megalithic builder or builders in the center. And this shows, once again, the incredible erosion patterns that we see with the megalithic works at the quarry at Baalbek. I doubt very much that this is the result of 2,000 years of weathering, but many, many thousands of years. And here we find, on the other side of the quarry, a stone that was successfully cut from the bedrock and is laying in its present position. It weighs approximately 1,000 tons, and the sections that were taken out, were that work was done by the Romans. So here again you can see sections on the top were cut out. So the Romans found this 1,000 ton block and decided to remove smaller pieces because that was within their capability as stone cutters. And here, the great thing about uh, filming in these locations is having people present. So you have people who are approximately six feet tall, and this gives you a sense of scale as compared to the giant stone that was successfully cut from the quarry. But once again, like the stone of the pregnant woman, you can see that the stone is partially buried in the ground, and that suggests several thousand years of buildup of soil. And just in a slightly finer detail, once again, you see the sections of stone that were removed. You see grooves where attempts were done to cut out larger sections. And it's clear to us that this work was megalithic, and it was done thousands of years prior to what academics tell us. And once again, just further detail, of the sections that were removed by the Romans and the grooves that they made, but they were not successful in cutting large blocks out of this megalithic work. And this, just to emphasize that. So the actual quarry is quite massive in scale, as you can see. Once again, you have a a person in the background that shows you the sense of scale. And the fact is that a large number of huge megalithic blocks were cut from the quarry in Baalbek and were successfully moved to the actual Baalbek temple complex of approximately one mile or 1.6 kilometers away. And here we see again quite extensive erosion, but what we'll be able to see when we get to the Baalbek site itself is we will see the actual tool marks. So now we're at the Baalbek temple location, and what we're looking at at the bottom is one stone that weighs 1,000 tons and was successfully put into place and notice the much smaller stones that are above. So what we can see in this picture is again that the Romans found this giant block in place and they used it as a foundation and then above that they put smaller stones not very tightly fitting. 
And here, it becomes even more grand because there are three 1,000 ton blocks in a row, very tightly fitting, no mortar, no gap, and above and to the right, we see the cruder and later work of the Romans. And this is just to emphasize that fact. The curious thing is that the stones underneath what is called the trilithon, which are these three stones in alignment, that the foundation blocks are smaller. And that's still a mystery to us, and that is why we will be returning over and over again to study, because going to an ancient location like this once really doesn't give you the full picture. You see the grand scheme that went on, but you don't get the details and the subtleties. And that's why, for example, I visited the ancient site of Machu Picchu in Peru so far, uh, so far 68 times, and now I think I have a good picture of what went on there. But for Baalbek, one trip was simply a taste of what more there is to learn. Okay, so this is another part of the temple complex of Baalbek. It's actually quite massive. Most people will simply focus on the quarry, but the full story of ancient Baalbek requires that you visit both the temple complex and also the quarry. So here you see incredible destruction. This is Roman work that was destroyed by invading peoples over the course of history. Like many locations in Europe and Asia, you've had wave after wave of destructive forces coming in. And that's the sad thing about these beautiful ancient places is that we see more destruction than we see the construction. But this photograph off, uh, offers us a subtle clue. The pillar in the foreground is made of granite, whereas most of the construction of Baalbek is limestone from the quarry, we see that granite is also located here. So the question is, where did the granite come from? And luckily we brought a geologist with us from Canada, and she had just been with us in Egypt, so she was able to figure out that the granite of Baalbek was probably from the Aswan Quarry located in southern Egypt. And the Aswan Quarry is 1,000 miles away. So that's curious, and that's also something that we see in other ancient locations. The stone isn't necessarily from the present locality, but can have been brought from hundreds of miles away. So questions automatically arise. How was the stone moved from that exotic location? And why was it important to bring the granite all the way from Aswan? So as we explore the complex at Baalbek, again, we see very massive stonework. This again is likely from the megalithic period, which is pre-Roman. And then here, again, the foundation appears to be megalithic with smaller stones on top. And then on the upper right-hand side, you see granite columns that have been reconstructed. And now we're going to walk into the complex of Baalbek itself. It's huge in scale, and so a, a visit there is much more intriguing than simply seeing photographs or videos, because being in the presence of something of this complexity and antiquity raises lots of questions, both in terms of ancient engineering and very much makes us ask whether academics have the full story, and from what you'll see, they have not fully described the antiquity and complexity at Baalbek. So here, for example, as you saw in previous photographs, you saw sections of granite columns, but what this shows us is the bottom part, which is still intact. And the surfaces here are perfectly smooth, perfectly polished, and this column is perfectly round. So that tells us originally 
It was between 15 and 20 feet tall and was made of one piece of stone. The only way that could have been achieved would be on a giant lathe and the technology to be able to shape granite to this fineness and high polish was only developed once we had diamond tool technology. And that didn't occur until the late 19th century AD. So not only was it impossible for the Romans to have constructed this, but li literally these 300 ancient columns had to have been found by the Romans and then reused. And this shows you evidence of the size of one of the columns. Unfortunately, all of them are found in a state of decay and destruction, once again, because Baalbek was fought over for hundreds, if not thousands of years, especially from the time of the Romans onward into the Middle Ages. But, thankfully, some sections were too big to be destroyed. So here we have Yusuf Awiyan walking through part of the megalithic structure. Again, you see blocks weighing at least 50 tons, and then the shattered remains of the destructive forces that invaded Baalbek over the course of time. And once again, just a sense of scale. Baalbek is a huge location, and it requires all day to walk through. So this again shows you quite clear evidence that the columns themselves, all 300 of them in granite, were turned on ancient lathes. We don't actually have this technology today, or if we do, it's very recent. But if you go back 200 years, these could not have been made, and you go back 2,000 years, and there is no way they could have been made by the Romans. And once again, the detail. You see the smooth surfaces, and this indicates lost ancient high technology at Baalbek in Lebanon. Sorry, and this is just finer detail of the complex surfaces. And once again, all of this granite, 300 columns being at least 15 feet, if not 20 feet tall, each was originally one piece of stone. All of them came from Aswan, which is a thousand miles away. So how many ships would that have taken? And how would they have been transported from the quarry in southern Egypt, all the way up the Nile to the Mediterranean, and then to the site of Baalbek? And again, with a sense of scale, you have a number of people in the upper left-hand area, and they are walking across stones in a row, each of which weighs 800 tons. And then you see the smaller work above that. The smaller work above is the work by the Romans. The foundational stones of 800-ton blocks each is the work of the earlier and more mysterious megalithic builders. And this just shows you once again the sense of scale. How would 800 ton blocks have been moved from the quarry at Baalbek even just one mile to this location? The idea that tree trunks were used is highly unlikely because these blocks would have crushed any wooden roller that was put underneath them. Also, the terrain is not flat so they would have had to have been pushed up and down hills. And again, just another aspect of Baalbek with the broken granite columns and the Roman work in the background. And this is Roman. This is classic Roman work in limestone. You see the fine detail. And the intriguing thing is that in the megalithic work, we find no art whatsoever. It's all simply shape and form. This is also what we find at other locations, which are megalithic, such as in Egypt. 
the interior and exterior of the Great Pyramid, we do not see any artwork whatsoever. And so this indicates that the megalithic builders were simply pragmatic. Art meant nothing to them. All they were interested in is scale, form, and function. And this uh, gives you another sense of scale. You see the block on the left-hand side next to the staircase. That block weighs at least 800 tons. The staircase is made of much smaller stones, and the stones above the giant megalithic block are from the Roman period, roughly put into place. And this just emphasizes that, the difference between this 800-ton block and here, the smaller Roman work. And here we have column sections weighing in at at least 50 tons apiece. And there, Stephen, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Stephen Mailer is pointing to a drill hole. That's a perfectly round drill hole. Could that have been done by the Romans in order to connect the different sections of the columns together? Possibly. But what we see are the surfaces are completely and perfectly flat, almost laser flat. And this just once again re-emphasizes the sense of scale. So of course that's me standing next to a, a section of a giant column. And this is where it gets fuzzy because in a lot of cases we'll see profound difference between the megalithic work and the later, in this case, Roman work. But in this case, are the giant sections megalithic or are they amazing works by the Romans? That I still can't figure out. But uh, this shows you, again, incredibly flat surfaces. We see no errors in the work. Normally the work of human sculptors or stonemasons, you will see errors. You'll see slight indentations or slight protrusions based on the fact that the tool technolo uh, technology they had, which was likely iron or possibly steel, uh, once in a while they would make an error of some kind. But in the case of where I'm looking right now, uh, that surface is as close to perfection as is possible. And then we find mysterious things like this. I have no idea what that was, but it's likely a, a work of the Romans. It's small in scale. It's finely done, but not technically perfect. And then we get to another fuzzy area. There you see me next to a series of giant columns. The columns are made in sections, approximately six to seven feet tall. So it is possible that the Romans were able to construct this. Again, the important point to emphasize is that the earlier megalithic columns made of granite were one single piece of stone and the later work of the Romans was multi-sectional. Again, this uh, simply gives you a sense of scale. That's me at the base of one of these giant columns. And here, a close-up just to emphasize the magnificent scale at Baalbek. Another question arises, and that's that the work in Rome itself was never of this scale. So why is it that the Romans were working in such a huge scale far, far away in the hinterlands of their empire? That, again, has not been satisfactorily answered. And this, once again, shows you the artwork of the Romans. You see the fact that you have fluting, you have swastika designs. Uh, the Romans were very big, just like the dynastic Egyptians were, in terms of surface artwork. But for the megalithic workers, no art whatsoever. Simply great scale, flat surfaces, monumental work. And here, it's kind of hard to see, but in the next photograph, you'll see the megalithic work on the left-hand side at the bottom, and then the archwork on top 
is of a smaller scale. So it's quite likely in this photograph that the rougher, larger work on the bottom was the megalithic work, and then the Romans added the arch work on top. Also, the amount of erosion on the surfaces of the lower stones indicates a greater antiquity than those above. You see the discoloration, you see the weathering, and so this photo, possibly by itself, shows you that two different civilizations were involved. And here again, simply the sense of scale. 800 tons in the center of the photo and much smaller on the left side and above. And here we have a woman five foot four and a stone of 800 tons. And once again, there are many, many of these stones in the foundation at the Baalbek um, religious area. I would say there are at least 20 to 30 to possibly even 40 stones locked in place at 800 to possibly 1,000 tons. And then contrast that with the work of the Romans in the background. A very great architectural and engineering achievement, but this work is humanly possible, and the other work is possibly not the work of humanity. We don't know who the ancient megalithic builders were. Were they so-called Atlanteans? Were they aliens? Were they an unknown culture that simply disappeared? That is something that we are presently working on. And again, simply the sense of scale. In the middle of the photo, you see two normal-sized men and the sense of dramatic scale in the background. And again, just for emphasis, people versus massive construction. This is Roman work. Again, you see smaller stones, you see artwork, you see arches, you see surface decoration. But what's intriguing are the two columns, because those two columns are the granite. The one on the left-hand side was broken into sections and then rebuilt during the Roman time period. And then the one on the right is still a single piece of stone. So that is one of the only pre Roman works in granite that is still in place. And again, at least 15 to 20 feet tall and had to have been turned on a massive lathe. And then we find other sections of the columns and these were uh, being cut by some kind of tool. The problem is we don't know when this cutting was done as well, the stone in the background, the pinky purple one, is called rhyolite. And that's a, a slightly harder stone than granite, much finer consistency. It too probably comes from the quarry at Aswan, a thousand miles or 1,600 kilometers away. And this is simply a detailed shot. We don't know if that's modern cutting or if it's ancient cutting. That again is why we have to return to Baalbek in the future to study the area more. We are among the few researchers who look at this ancient location in such fine detail and obviously question the fact that the Romans could not have been responsible for all of the work done. And again, just to emphasize the fine work of the Romans in limestone, which is relatively soft, and in contrast, the ancient cutting marks in granite. To emphasize hardness, limestone is about 3 to 3.5 in hardness out of 10, with 10 being diamond, and granite is 7 out of 10. So the only technology we know of that can cut granite efficiently is diamond technology. 
And again, what these ancient cut marks were from, are they modern? Were they done prior to this being made a World Heritage Site? We do see some rust marks, so that indicates possible steel technology, but these are mysterious aspects of Baalbek <coughs> that, as far as I can tell, ancient, uh, or sorry, academics and specifically archaeologists do not want to look at. Here again, you see the rust marks on the right-hand side. And this in finer detail. Were they simply trying to cut small sections out? It's uh, very mysterious and ambiguous at this point. And this simply gives you a sense of scale of Baalbek. Uh, the Temple of Jupiter is an aspect at Baalbek, but it's only one portion of it. It is more than 100 acres in size. And this is actually on the way outside of Baalbek. It's another Roman-style temple. You see the sense of scale is relatively small, and contrast that with the giant megalithic blocks that we find at the exit point at the Baalbek temple site. Again, I just want to emphasize the megalithic blocks on the bottom, and then these smaller arched blocks above. And this just uh, shows that more in detail. So that's the intriguing location of Baalbek, but we also went to another location called Byblos. And Byblos is located on the Mediterranean in Jordan. It is present in the Bible, and Byblos I believe translates as meaning book, and that is where our term Bible comes from. And here again, we mainly see uh, Roman construction and then later construction, but we do see some intriguing anomalies here which are not addressed by standard academia. So there, you see relatively small blocks of limestone and this is more of a time period of possibly the Middle Ages. All consistent style of construction. No megalithic huge stones. All relatively small that human beings could have moved with relative ease. And then we find these interesting circular shapes. These again are sections of granite columns. So this granite at Byblos also came most likely from the granite quarry at Aswan, about a thousand miles away. They were found broken into sections, and therefore the builders of this wall simply used them in their construction. Because why would you want to go to a quarry and cut stone out if there's a lot of it lying on the ground? Very practical and pragmatic. Here again, we see a Roman time period construction, or later, and another wall with sections of the pillars. So more than, we, as we saw, at least 300 pillars were moved from Aswan to Baalbek, but then likely another 50 or possibly 100 were moved to Byblos. And it is possible that during the, uh, the time of the construction by the Romans that these pillars were actually at Baalbek and they were moved section by section from Baalbek to Byblos to be incorporated into this wall. And here, another Roman uh, time period construction at Byblos. And in the background, you see a solid granite column. In the foreground, you see sections in limestone of a Roman time period column, but the background one is a single solid piece of granite that most likely was brought from Baalbek and before that was taken from the Aswan Quarry. So you see the complexity of these ancient sites and why it's important to visit them and to really use your eyes as much as possible. It's good to read the story, uh, the stories and accounts of the archaeologists and historians, 
but they actually, I think, refuse to address the inconsistencies that you've been looking at so far in this video. Because here, once again, if we look back, we see a Roman or later construction, and here, sections of granite columns incorporated during the Roman or later time periods into this wall construction. And here again, and here again. And finally, we did find a megalithic section at Byblos. Here you have Yusuf Awian, and above his head is a block of limestone which is at least 40 tons. So Byblos as well shows us megalithic work, and so that's why it's going to be important in the future to visit other areas of the Near East and Middle East to see what else there is that we can find that is not properly explained by standard academia.